and welcome to the Temple of Hip Hop. I am KRS-One. The Temple of Hip Hop is a hip hop preservation ministry, archive, school, and society. We started in 1996 to ensure the proper documentation of hip hop as a divinely inspired global culture of peace and prosperity. I want to thank all of the newly certified hip hop cultural specialists that just completed their course, just completed their class. Big up to you. We went through a hardcore three days, crammed in the knowledge. We started at 1520 Sedgwick Avenue, got it in right there, and then our certification and the final part of the course was here at the Temple of Hip Hop. That's where I am right now. I'm here at the Temple of Hip Hop, uh, and I'm in what is called our library room. You'll notice as I'm speaking, you hear a loud, like an echo, like a small room. I don't know if you can hear that, but uh, there's a, I'm sort of in a big room right here. It's kind of empty here because this is, like I said, the library room. And behind me is Bradford Brown's brilliant artwork, priceless artwork behind us. We don't sell this stuff. That's why it's priceless. We, we, we are reminded of our heritage, reminded of our culture. Those of you that are hip hop cultural specialists now, you know how to interpret this. You, you, you know what these things mean. So when you're bringing in your, your, uh, your group to, um, you know, to walk them through the temple of hip hop and to explain the artwork on the wall, explain hip hop, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, you, you, you're on point. Uh, you're, you're absolutely on point uh, with this. So we thank all of the um, hip hop cultural specialists that have graduated here at the temple of hip hop. Uh, and like I said behind me, this art here reminds us of our heritage. It's stories that are told with this art that is actually behind me. But I got this art behind me right now because obviously we're doing so much work here at the temple in terms of moving things around, putting up exhibits, we're having our classes, we just had a graduation, we're getting organized internally. Those of you that get the weekly update uh, from the Temple of Hip Hop, you should know that next week's update is gonna be the last update. Next week's update, which is the 18th update, is gonna be the last update. After this, we're gonna do monthly updates. After this, at the top of the year. We were doing the weekly updates to keep us all organized as we got to this stage. So we got here now, we're at this level. We've passed level one organization. Uh, we did what we were supposed to do. We crossed all our T's, we dotted all our I's. And now we're at level two. Uh, level two now has to do with, uh, like for instance, for instance, let, 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 me, let me make sure you guys understand this. So we've entered this building, 26,000 square feet too, by the way, multiple rooms, et cetera. So when you enter a facility like this, you gotta figure out, like for instance, where's the power? Where's the water? Uh, if something breaks in here, who do you call to fix it? We're in partnership with the city of Newark. So it's not just us that run with a wrench and a hammer to go fix things when it gets broken. If things get broken in here, we first can call the city. You first call the city, see if they got a guy that can come through and check this out and so on. If it takes too long, if it's not, then of course it's on us. So we gotta go do our thing. But I mention this to say that when you come into a building like this and we have ideas, we know what we want to do, but at the same time, we're navigating the community. We want to keep our door open. We want to keep our door open to the young people in this neighborhood. We want to keep our door open also to hip hoppers that come through and, and like to check out the pieces and so on. Like I said, we're still doing this. We're still putting the pieces and stuff together. But if you got something you can contribute, bring it through. Come on through. One of which is the fact that I'm in this library and what we're looking for is to put every single hip hop book ever made in this space. Every book ever made on hip hop or every book that will be made on hip hop 
will be will come into this space. We will document and collect every single book written on hip hop. And that's a lot of books. And I'm not talking about just the big books from the big publishers. I'm talking about if you are author and you'd like to document or archive your book in hip hop's real history, come to the Temple of Hip Hop, drop off your book, we'll code it, we'll, we'll catalog it, uh, and, and whatever notes you want to put with the book, and we'll file it right here at the Temple of Hip Hop. Like I said, we are a, a ministry archive school and society. So I'm honored right now to be in my, my library. It's so funny because, you know, I left school at a, at a young age, junior high school, to study in the library. And so here I am now some years later, sitting in my own library. You know, this is what we teach at the Temple of Hip Hop. The manifestation of your ideas. The manifestation of your mind. You know, the United uh, Negro College Fund, years ago, there used to be a thing called the United Negro College Fund. And at the end of all their commercials, uh, they used to come on TV telling you to go to college and get something, get an education. And at the end of their, their commercial, they used to say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And I remember being young, man, and a lot of young people didn't even understand. A lot of adults didn't even understand that. But I understood it for some reason at very young age. They said, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. And I understood that. I actually understood that. I actually was like, wow, you know, I'm not going to waste my mind. And I understood it at a young age, which is now I understand. I understand a little bit more about the reality of life and how when you learn things at a young age, or matter of fact, whatever you learn at a young age, it is inevitable that you will bring it into your adulthood. So it's like when you young and got your mind, you know, your, your mind is open and fresh and, and your brain is not even fully developed. You're not even 25 or 30 yet. But before 25, you, your brain's starting to just get mad, just getting made like that. The, the neurons are just, just starting to form up. You know, like you're gonna, like it's forming personality. You're, you're forming yourself. You're putting yourself together. You're literally making up your mind. You're, you're literally making up your mind in your adolescent and teenage years. So what you put in your mind in your adolescent and teenage years is the man, you're gonna manifest your adulthood. You know, your adulthood is the manifestation of your teenage mind. So when I was younger, I, I, I really, I loved knowledge. I loved education, philosophy. I wanted to know what the real was, you know, all of this type of stuff, ethics, morals. You know, I was into all of that. And I mention that because what, I, what I'm trying to impart here is that, you know, you never, you never stop learning, first of all. But it's always good to learn at a young age. If you're listening to me right now and you are under 25, make sure that you are putting into yourself the adult you'd like to be. Not just putting into yourself today's gossip, today's scandal, today's bullshit. You're going to put that in you as a young person. And so when you get older, what you going to have? As a matter of fact, that's why we started our temple early, because we know that a lot of young people are not getting the soul they're supposed to get. They're not getting the sustenance, the mental and spiritual sustenance that they're supposed to get. And we're not putting ourselves above nobody. We're not claiming no holy this and coming out the sky with, 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 with light. That's not what we're doing here. Here, we are philosophers. So our spiritual knowledge has to make sense. We, we can't sell you something you never see, never touch, never taste, not even experience. But yet we're going to keep telling you believe in this and believe in that and this, that, and the other. Come on. We don't practice spirituality without justice. I, we went over this last week sometime that hip hop is a spirituality that includes justice. 
It includes right. It includes real. So sitting here in a real temple, in the temple's real library, standing behind the renditions of our ancestors, we speak the truth. If in fact you're a young person, you have to feed your mind with positive ideas. It's not just you have to feed your mind with positive ideas because, it's, uh, because positive ideas build character. It is more the fact that you have to build, you have to put, feed yourself positive ideas because those, whatever ideas you give yourself is going to become the reality of your adulthood. Now, when I say young, you know that's a catch word, right? Young could be 14, you know, 12, 14, 16, 18. Young could be 50. It's really a matter of where you are. What is young? Able to change, able to develop, still developing. What is old? I stopped developing. What, what is old? I know already. I got it. I'm, I'm, I, I know. That's old. Now, there's reason for old sometimes. Sometimes you got to know something. But sometimes you got to learn something. And if you're not willing to learn, you're not willing to grow. And that's where the old comes in. What's young? Young. I don't know. I need to find out. I'm new on the planet. I need to figure this out. Now, sometimes, young, you know what it is, undisciplined, running around, you get hurt like that. Another part to being young, I don't know. Now you can find out. When you're young, you're an empty cup. Now you can have something poured in. Old people, old heads, as they say, your cup full. <laughs> you done lived a full life. You already got ideas. You done made decisions. You done made commitments. You done, you know, so you stuck in your ways. Hard for you to learn something new. Unless at any age, you have a young personality. I'm still learning. At 50, I got more to learn. At 60, I got another mountain to climb. I'm not finished yet. I'm really just getting started. That's a young mentality, it's a young attitude. But that attitude is not secure. That attitude is not stable. That attitude doesn't know. That attitude needs to know, needs to find stability, needs to find security, needs to get where it gotta go. That's your youth. But now, if in fact you thought the right things at a young age, applied yourself in the right ways at a young age, when you get older, the manifestation of that flowers. And now you're an adult with the right mind doing the right things. Even if you're 30, listening to me right now, even if you're 40, Listen to me right now. You can still adopt new ways. You can still adapt to a new situation. It's all about the control of your emotions. Is, uh, is your emotional state so rigid? You can't change. You can't move. You refuse to do You refuse to do that. Or should I say, you're afraid to do this and afraid to do that. You're stuck in your ways. This has always worked for you. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And sometimes that works. Stability is good. Consistency is good. But not always. Sometimes inconsistency is good. Contradiction is good. Going off the path is good. These things are for the courageous. These things are for those who really, what they say, trendsetters, pathfinders, you know, pioneers. 
That's the path of those. So you got to ask yourself, who am I? Am I afraid to carve a new path? Or am I really content with the path I'm on? Why do we start here? Because, you know, there's a whole bunch of places we can go with this particular thing. This is about maturity of one's mind, maturity of one's soul, uh, the character of a person, um, this kind of thing. We can go in a million directions with this. But today's read is on forgiveness. And this here is the piece right here. Because I'm talking about maturity. I'm talking about being rigid in your mind. An old head being rigid. I don't want to think about nothing else but what I thought about. Or a young head. The undisciplined can't, can't, can't latch on to something and be consistent with it for a long period of time. It's these disciplines that once brought, you know, into order, they, they, they give you the life you need. And, and, and if, somebody, if somebody doesn't come up and say this to you, you might not even know. You might not even know. You can go your whole life not knowing that you didn't have to live a bitter person, a resentful person, an angry person, living in your own pain even. Your own pain of, he did this to me, victimization, all of this. You ain't got to live like that. You are in control of your own mind. You know, they always say, you can't control what's going to happen to you, but you can control how you're going to react to it. So, like I said, today's read is on forgiveness, and forgiveness is hardcore. Because every act cannot be forgiven. That's just a fact. There's some acts that are unforgivable, especially acts of murder. These acts are unforgivable. But some, because, and when I say unforgivable, because some actions you can't go back on. You know, once you did it, you did it. And, and, and the harm is done, so we can't, even if you say, I'm sorry, the harm is still done. So it's like some acts are unforgivable, but even with unforgivable acts, you can still display a forgivable mind. You see, forgiveness is not for the other person. Forgiveness is a self-protection. It's a higher level of maturity that I'm about to lay on you right now. Turn your gospels to, uh, well, this is the gospel of hip hop. This is our character guide. <laughs> and we've been reading the gospel of hip hop now uh, for, for maybe coming up on three, uh, three four years now. Some of it uh, are even uh, more than that. Um, I should have something to wipe these off with. Uh, uh, no, no, no. You know what? I'm just going to use the edge of this shirt like everybody else do. Um, and so, and so the reason we turn here to forgiveness, I was getting ready to set this up in this way that uh, for those that are just tuning in or whatever, you should go back, check the other lessons. But the, the point to the gospel of hip hop here is that we have 18 um, divine performances, 18 divine performances within this book. And these performances, these 18 performances are characters. Like I said, if you're young, these 18 performances, what we call divine performances, if you can bring this into your heart and make it a habit in your life, this is the good life. This is, this is the instruction you need to hear. And some of y'all need to hear it right now. You've been wronged. Dude know he wrong. Homegirl knows she did wrong. Now it's time for forgiveness. Can you forgive? Do you know how to forgive? What's the point to forgiveness? Like I opened up, I said, forgiveness is not just about the other person letting them off the hook. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is letting you off the hook. If you can practice forgiveness, you can protect yourself from any evil act that come your way. Think about it. The one who's ready to give, the one who can give anything away, 
it's never stolen from. You can't steal from a giver. You can't harm a forgiver. Anything you do to, the, to, to, to harm a forgiver, you're going to be forgiven. And the forgiveness is going to come from a place of love and high wisdom. The love is, forgive them, mother, they know not what they do. This is their ignorance. The high wisdom is, let me protect myself first. Let, let, let me, okay, the wrong has come. The wrong has hit me. Let me not react to it the way the wrong wants me to react. Let me react on a higher level. This is my chance right now to perform a divine performance. I can prove my divinity right now by forgiving this wrongful act. I'm not saying you got to do it this weekend <laughs> because sometimes it's hard to forgive people for what they're doing, but you got to be able, you, this, this type of mess, this type of, of message and this type of life requires maturity, maturity, maturity. Which is what the spiritual path is all about. Let me read through this real quick. Today's a short lesson. Today's a short lesson. And when I end with this lesson, uh, I'm going to throw on a, a classic after this. It's called Choosing to be Spiritually Minded. I did this back in 2004. Uh, I guess we're coming up on 20 years. Um, did this back in 2004. And... Um, you need to see this. It'll it'll follow up. It follows this particular message. That's why we're going to show it. Let's let's turn our gospels to page uh, one hundred and sixty-one. Page one hundred and sixty-one of the Gospel of Hip Hop. Page one hundred and sixty-one of the Gospel of Hip Hop. I'm going to read this pretty quickly and go through uh, because I have a gig tonight. Uh, I have a concert in a couple of hours. As a matter of fact, I'm in Irvington, New Jersey. Uh, and I'm actually blazing them in this sense. As you probably know, this has been pre-recorded. So here we are, uh, 616, page uh, 161. I'm on the fifth divine performance. It's called Perform Forgiveness. Guilt is self-imposed. Begin by forgiving yourself for all of your indiscretions. Yes, you do have the power to repent and forgive yourself. Yes, you do have the power to let it go. Hold no grudge, harbor no anger, and release resentment and guilt. Remember, an act that you may perceive as evil may have turned out to be a blessing in disguise. See, if you live long enough, you live, you, you'll experience this. You thought two years ago that was the worst thing ever. Two years later, you find out why it happened, and you're receiving the blessing now. Remember, an act that you may have perceived as evil may have turned out to be a blessing in disguise. At the beginning of your spiritual studies, at the beginning, this is, this is the beginning, the young mind. At the beginning of your spiritual studies, do not judge yourself and or others. Only make observations and learn. Turn away from evil thinking and never return. Show love, not revenge. Be ready to forgive others by restoring some level of resolve into the relationship. Forgive others just as you would want to be forgiven. Be patient with others, just as you would want God to be patient with you. This is a divine performance. And it's hard on this. This proves your divinity, because when the act is going down, when the wrong deed is happening, you don't think about all this, unless you're divine. And that's why, that's why, it, that's why, these disciplines are so difficult for, for many because it's not something you could just study in a book. 
This book is confirming who you really are. Can you forgive? And let it go. This is a divine performance. Give the transgressor a chance to repair the situation. If this is not possible, take steps to ensure that the evil and or selfish act will not happen to you again. But still, perform forgiveness, not resentment or revenge. Show love, not hate. Teach, do not judge. Show your spiritual strength through understanding and patience not through emotion and or criticism. Did you hear that? Show your spiritual strength. We talked about lifting spiritual weights last week. Well, show your spiritual strength through understanding and patience, not through emotion and or criticism. Always know that you are walking, or always know that you are working on behalf of God, not yourself. That's a big one there. Now, that's a huge line right there. Always know that you are working on behalf of God, not yourself. See, if you're working on behalf of God, nothing can harm you because it ain't. It's not about you. If I'm here on behalf of someone else, if I don't achieve it, or whatever, or if I'm harmed, or whatever, it's not. It's not really even about me. You could curse me out all day. I'm not here for me. Look at this. God, uh, oh man, always know that you are working on behalf of God, not yourself. This will help you with the resentment you may feel because of the selfish acts of others. For every selfish act committed against you, your God shall indeed restore you. Work for God, not for yourself or others. Big, this is big. When you, when you work and walk on behalf of God, it's easier to forgive. Do not ask God to use you as a tool of peace or as a vessel of love. If you are not prepared to be stuck into the dirt and the stench of the world itself. Know this, God shall use you to clean up the vomit of the world and to catch its feces. God shall use you to be stuck into the soil of the world in an effort to plant new seeds. Is this not the work of our God? Try to remember, that symbolically you are the tool of God. That it is the universe, not you, that is doing the work. You, the teacher, are the tool that helps the, that helps the work to get done. Just as we use tools to go into places that we ourselves cannot go into, so it is with God. God is spirit, and those that commit to their God are like that of valuable tools in the material world. Indeed, God is an artist, a master builder, a great architect, and we, the teachers, are the tools. When a great architect finds a good tool that is indispensable to the building of the world, that tool is preserved and repaired, cleansed and restored repeatedly for the sake of the work that is necessary to achieve. Eventually, the good tool is set aside and remembered for a faithful service. You are the tool, teacher, of your environment. And tools are used to go into those difficult and hard to reach places of the world. You cannot run and hide when difficult people and or situations arise. This is like a plunger that refuses to go into a stopped up toilet or even a hammer that refuses to hit the, hit the nail into the wall. Teachers that refuse to teach D teachers that refuse to teach difficult people in difficult places at difficult times are like broken tools. And if, a, and if tools break where they cannot be restored, they are indeed thrown away. You are, the rep you are the representation of your God. Indeed, you may be the only hope in your environment. This is real. 
With every sincere act of forgiveness, you gain another degree in your spiritual development. And it is these degrees that prove your usefulness, strength, and trustworthiness before God. Forgiveness proves your endurance. Take advantage of every evil and or selfish moment brought before you. Tell the selfish one, you are forgiven. Look into the face of those who tried to harm you and say, you are forgiven. Even while the evil and or selfishness is occurring, subdue your emotions, take advantage of the moment, and tell the evil and or selfish one, you are forgiven. And really mean it. God is examining your heart to determine your level of spiritual maturity and trustworthiness. Remember, your, remember your own times of ignorance and or fear and correct your own past errors by performing patience with those who are blind, immature, fearful, confused, or, or, or have wronged you today. Learn to forgive yourself and others. Forgiveness leads to freedom and health, while resentment leads to bondage and sickness. Take care of yourself. Heal yourself. Release guilt. Through various, through, through, through virtuous living, turn your own ignorant past into a testimony or a ministry for the correction of others. For no one can minister or teach upon a subject they themselves have no experience with. Instead of feeling guilty for your own past actions, use them as evidence of your wisdom and as evidence of your victory over the world's obstacles. Use your corrected failures as the textbook that you shall teach others from. Allow your corrected failures, your corrected errors, to qualify your wisdom to teach. This very gospel is a product of such advice. You know how many errors we had to make <laughs> to get to this? And it's still errors we have to correct. Let the immature thinking of others bounce off of you like rain. Do not drink the immaturity of others by responding to their ignorance with more ignorance. In hostile situations, protect yourself first through immediate forgiveness. Never empower the weaknesses of others with resentment and or immediate or, or the your your immediate impulse to act as they did. Be the light in all situations. Once you have performed the act of forgiveness, you can believe that God is sure to follow up with justice. This is a divine performance. Work for God, not for self. For it is selflessness that gives strength to forgiveness. I'll say it again. For it is selflessness that gives strength to forgiveness. No one can hurt or betray a self that doesn't exist. If you are hurting, it is most likely because you have accepted someone, someone else's immaturity onto yourself. You have allowed the immaturity of others to change your godlike nature. Why would you do that? Therefore, do not waste time on revengeful, resentful, or angry performances. For with your, with your divine performance, God is sure to close the show. Only seek to help. Even in, agree, even in argument, only seek to correct the ignorance of others. Never argue angrily or resentfully. Only teach. That's a discipline, you know. Even in argument, don't let the emotions come up out of you and say all types of craziness. Discipline yourself only to teach. Even in argument. Mature hip hoppers never argue just to prove a point. Such an argument is pointless. Instead, try to learn you hear that? No argument trying to prove a point. Instead, try to learn and study. Look at this. 
Try to learn and truly understand the opposing view. I was going to say study the opposing view. You know, instead, try to learn and truly understand the opposing view. Show respect for the thinking of others and with a forgiving heart, remind them of their own ignorance for their own sake. Perform forgiveness. This is what's important in life. Revenge, anger, bitterness. I'm going to get them, I'm going to get back at you. That don't lead to nowhere. Now keep in mind, you know, sometimes you have to fight. We know that. Sometimes you have to defend yourself. We know that. Sometimes somebody do something to you and you have to go check that person. We know that. We're not negating that. Matter of fact, standing upon that, we get to the point where we have to say, wait a minute, who's more important here? Me or this idiot trying to harm me? Let me first protect myself. How do you protect yourself? By establishing peace, love, unity, and joy at the top. This is my habit. This is all I know how to do. I've made peace a habit. I've made forgiveness a habit. I don't have to get angry with you. In fact, your act proves that you're immature. And would you really get mad at a five-year-old, a three-year-old? Like if a three-year-old came in and stepped on your brand new white Nike Air Force Ones, a three-year-old came through with chocolate ice cream, spilt it on your sneakers. You'd be like, that would have felt like this goddamn kid. <laughs> what is your problem? But it's a three-year-old. Something comes over you and you have to restrain yourself. No matter how hard, no matter how, how wild it is, chocolate ice cream or white on white Nikes, you got to just go ahead and get that rag, G, and just try to get, get that off because it's a three-year-old who doesn't even understand what a Nike is or this, that, the, you know, whatever. It's a three-year-old or, or even this. Would you get upset and angry and bitter and bitter over someone with a mental condition? With all due respect, you know, some people have serious mental conditions and they do things or they show out or, or you know, this, this, they don't have normal behavior. And what is that? But they don't have public behavior, I should say. You know, they, 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 they need to be restrained or, you know, this, this, this kind of thing. Would you get angry with a person if they walked up to you? You know they have a mental problem. And they walked up to you like, man, get the fuck out of my face. I don't give a mind. You stupid. You ugly. You bitch. You that. I don't like. I hate you. I if you knew they had a mental problem, none of that would bother you. You'd be like, this dude got a mental problem. And you'd be like, you know, you would just deal. Matter of fact, some would come with care and be like, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Man, fuck you. And then that will move. And then Look, it's going to be all right. Just relax. Just sit down. But that's because you have knowledge that the person has a problem. Now, if you applied what I just told you to the entire human race, you'll be all right. <laughs> you'll be all right. This, this technique works. When you get into the habit of realizing that people that do harm to you are crazy out of their mind. Why would you want to harm another person? It's because you're desperate. It's because you're ignorant. It's because you're immature. It's because you're afraid. It's because you think you're going to lose. It's because of all these reasons that have everything to do with insanity or immaturity. So if you know that people are doing wrong things because of insanity or immaturity, then you know how to deal with them. You know how to deal with them. You don't get angry at a kid for being a kid. You don't get angry at somebody who's mentally challenged because they're mentally challenged. So if you know people are coming at you stupid, and not that stupid is mentally challenged, I'm talking about they coming at you stupid. Like, you trying to play me right now. <laughs> you ain't mentally challenged, and you ain't young. You are 40 years old. <laughs> you know, like, you trying to play me right now. You can still protect yourself and say, even though you're trying to, you don't see that what you're doing is stupid. You don't see that what you're doing is going to harm us all. You don't see that what you're doing. So, obviously, you don't see this. 
So let me deal with you. It's going to be all right. Relax. You got it. Listen, let's talk this over. Man, I don't give a mother. I think you a mother, but I don't, I don't, don't. It's all right. It's all good. Listen, just relax. Let's talk it over. Look, look I'm going to leave, and I'll come back. You call me when you... I'm never going to call you. I ain't never going to... No problem. Here's my card. Call me whenever you get a chance. Now, that's how you would deal with somebody you knew had a mental problem. But you will not deal with your family like this. They jump up in your face. You jumping right up in theirs. Coworker, student, you know, whatever. You out there, team work, team play. You on the basketball team, somebody elbow you. You know, like any, any of that. You immediately want to fight. And why do you want to fight? Because you created a scenario in your own head that told you this person is, is trying to harm me, this person's trying to play me, this person's trying to do me, and I don't have no other way. I can't control my own mind regarding this person. That's what you say when you get angry and resentful and you can't forgive. What you say is the other person has control of your mind. The other person, the act of the other person is making you into a person you don't want to be. Grab hold of yourself. Control yourself. We talked about that last week. Perform discipline. Without discipline, you can't get to forgiveness. Forgiveness is a discipline. So we begin to see how the gospel of hip-hop is taking us in stages of development, stages of character development. That's going to conclude our lesson, uh, at least our read. It doesn't conclude the lesson. It concludes this read. And I urge you all to forgive those around you. Find the strength to forgive and let it go. Don't be bitter, upset. You know, I mean, and look at it. Look, you're looking at me right now, right? I've got a smile on my face, okay? I, I've eaten today. I've drank good water, you know, like this, okay? I'm standing here. I'm able to, what, what can make me angry? Okay, there's people out here right now, they got all types of stuff to say about KRS-One. Oh, I hate him, I don't like him, who he think he is, ah, all types of stuff. Do I really care? No, you're not going to, your act and your mouth is not going to control me. So I have already forgiven you. I've already forgiven you because I know you crazy. <laughs> I know. I know you're immature. So it's, oh, it's all right. It's cool. You, I got, you don't understand life yet. Now, if you understood life, you would, you, you would see that there's no reason for argument. There's never a reason for argument. Two people should be able to sit down and work out their differences with respect for one another, with care for, uh, for one another. But if you're too immature to care for another human being, then that's what the issue is. And I'm not going to allow that issue on you to become an issue with me. That's forgiveness. I will now turn you over to an old lecture that I did. I was a lot younger, you'll see. Uh, I went to the Hillside Chapel uh, and Truth Center in 2004. I was studying with metaphysicians back then. Uh, and so on. Shout out to Dr. Barbara uh, as, as well. So um, I gave this lecture called Choosing to be Spiritually Minded. Choosing to be Spiritually Minded. And it was a great lecture. I really enjoyed it. Not great, you know, because I gave it, but I learned something. I, I felt blessed that day. You'll see how the congregation uh, really put their arms around me and we, we got into a deep lesson about character, about the character of a spiritually minded person. That includes forgiveness, that includes mercy, that includes love and care. I'll see you guys next week. I'm going to leave you off with this. It's called Choosing to be Spiritually Minded. See you next week. Let's greet Chris as we do all our visitors. We love you. We bless you. We appreciate you.
and we thank God for you. Whoa. Let me digest that. <laughs> wow. I'm going to talk to you today about choosing to be spiritually minded. And look at, look at the phrase, choosing to be spiritually minded. This is a choice that a lot of you have made here today, just being here today. You could have been anywhere today. A lot of people are anywhere <laughs> today, right now as we speak. You chose to be here. You know, a lot of times we walk into the future and we look back on ourselves. They say hindsight is 2020. We look back on ourselves and we say, wow, I was really blessed back then. But it's always in the future. When we're going through the blessing, <laughs> we never see it. Being conscious has to do with being aware of your space and time. Right now, we are blessed. Right now, in this room, we are blessed. Turn to, uh, let's hit Mark chapter 16, verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. When, you, when you're there, say Namaskar. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. In, in the Lamza, it says to all creation, I think. Right? And he said unto them, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go ye into all the world. Stop there. Go ye into all the world. I'm spiritual. You told me to get out of the world. Oh, here's the command right here. Go <laughs> into the world. Not into your church. Oh, man. Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature, not every Christian. They say preach to every Jew, preach to every Muslim. It didn't even say preach to every human being. It said preach the gospel to every creature. Now stop here. Just, just meditate on this now for a minute. We're told by Christ here to go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. What kind of gospel is that? If I'm supposed to go into the world and preach this gospel to every creature, or as the Lamza version says, all creation, that means the gospel is beyond words. That means that whatever the gospel is, a dog can understand it. A bird can understand it. An insect can understand it. A bear can, a lion can understand it. Any, go preach the gospel to every creature. So we sat here and we thought about it. We said, well, what, what gospel would every creature in nature understand? The answer, love. A lot, of, a, a, a lot of people misinterpret that and they say, preach the gospel to every creature and they pick up their book and start talking. It's 
not the instruction. The instruction says every creature, a dog understands a pat on the back. A cat understands a bowl of milk. A bird understands bread, seeds, care, compassion, affection. Every creature understands love. So whatever the gospel is, it's not words. Whatever it is, go and preach the gospel. Obviously, this is some kind of an activity. Something we supposed to be doing. Doing. Be doers of the word. Be doers of the word. Love. When you decide to live spiritually minded, you will notice that you ain't got no choice. Love swells up in your heart. Matter of fact, some of the reasons why you choose to be spiritually minded is because you, you don't even understand yourself. You say, man, I, I, I have this feeling of just love. I mean, I like people. I want to, you know, I'm always trying to help. Every time somebody got a problem, they call in me. Hi, hello, somebody in here. <laughs> you gonna go home right now phone line <laughs> message said hey you know I, I just wanted to call you to say I, can you help can you I need you to come and watch the kids I, I need you to do it I need, I, can you borrow some money can I, I <laughs> you guys are usually the ones helping somebody else <laughs> I got a witness in here but but look at the burden, as I mentioned, the first, the first step. Look at the burden of that. You're weighed down. Because you are in the spirit, but you're in the world. And even though you've decided to be spiritually minded, and nobody else has. <laughs> and what a burden that can be. You tell somebody, your kids, your friends, whatever, your husband, your wife, don't do that. And they do it anyway. Then they come back in sorrow. And it's your burden to still help. How many times have your kids, those that have children, you know, you said, don't, you know, I don't like so-and-so. So-and-so ain't no good. Why? Because you have wisdom. And you say, I've been there already with so-and-so. And, -so. and so-and-so's not good. Oh, Ma, Dad, man, come on, man. You always dissing my friends. Three months later. Oh, what, 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 what happened to Johnny? Oh, man, he's whack, man. Oh man, he man, I lent him my my my, my shirt. He wouldn't give me my shirt back. I, I I told him to come over and play some records. He broke my turntable. Uh, man, uh, man, Mark, could you buy me another one? <laughs> now the burden is on you. You told so and so. Don't go down that path. It's not good for you. They ain't listen. Now they walked down the path and gained wisdom. But the burden falls on you. Because the compassion and the love in your heart refuses to turn your back. So you say, come on. All right, here it is. You may give him a lecture. You may say, eh, but here it is. My love for you, I'm still going to give no matter what. You cursed me out last week, but I'm still here. This is what it is to be spiritually minded. And it's important that we all gain strength in this. Otherwise, we will become very stressed out. We become very stressful spiritual people, if there's such a term. <laughs> You'll be in the spirit and not, man, why God is, when, when is my day coming? 
your day is there this is your day right here the burden is on you the cross is on you you are innocent you've done no wrong but somehow you're linked up with the wrong of others because of your love for them don't shirk from your responsibilities don't be afraid this is what you're supposed to do you are the blessing in someone's life you are the blessing don't look at it as a burden look at it as this is who I am and I am that I am. I am who I am. I, this is me. I'm not Suzanne. So I stand firm as the blessing, as the answered prayer in someone's life. You know, we, 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 we pray and then we expect a supernatural answer to the prayer. No, we each of us, each of us here are God's assistants. Think of yourself as a secretary for God. That's a new concept. I'm jotting down, taking notes for God. I'm making sure God's schedules are kept. I'm making sure God answers her calls. <laughs> I'm God's secretary. And so when someone comes to the office, I meet them and say, hi, what can we do for you? Well, God, get me out of this. Anyone who's run a corporation knows that the CEO don't do no work. <laughs> so always the secretary. Always the manager, always that person who is not the, 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 the power, the top, the, the lead. It's always that assistant, that secretary that handles the whole company while the CEO is off water skiing. He punches up, she punches up. Hey, how's everything going in the office? And of course, if you give a negative report, it's you that's fired. <laughs> you know, no, it's you that's fired. The CEO says, well, you're not doing your job. What do you mean I'm not doing my job? These people are crazy. <laughs> but, what, but what the CEO expects is for you to handle your business. You don't keep running back to the CEO. We got a problem. <laughs> we got a problem. <laughs> no, you solve problems. And this is another level of spiritual thought that I'll give you today. Don't look for God to solve your problems. Solve God's problems. Take that in your heart today. It is empowering. When I decided to solve God's problems, my problems got solved. But when I waited on God to solve my problems, I was waiting and waiting and waiting. And then you get that philosophy, wait on the Lord. Just wait, wait, wait. Life go by, you still waiting. No, reverse that real quick. God, look, there's some issues over here, but listen, I'll be right back. I'm going to solve that for you. I'll be right back. So-and-so over here got an issue, but I'm going to solve that, God. I'm going to come on your behalf, God, and solve these problems. 
You know, in the Bible, it, 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 it speaks of God as a parent. And they often use the, the, the father analogy or a, a concept. And God as a parent, I often look at that and I say, if I had a parent that was a million years old, <laughs> if I had a parent that, you know, I respected and I, you know, I, I adored, I don't bring my parent problems. I bring my parents the first fruits. I don't go to my father, my mother's, I got another problem. No, even if I got a problem, I'm going to solve it. I'm going to solve it. Now, here's what I learned, wisdom-wise. When you step up and say, God, hold on, I'm going to solve this problem. I'll be right back. God comes with you. No parent will let their child go to war and just be like, okay, you go on. Most of the time when a parent sees their child trying, they will come automatically to their aid. No prayer, no begging, no pleading. This is the spiritual walk. This is what it means to choose to be spiritually minded. Back off a little bit from the supernatural. And just come to the practical real quick. Just real practical. Because when spirituality is practical in your life, God is practical in your life. I ain't even going to tell you how I got here to this podium right here. I can't, we are marveling over this. We, we, we just sit in the back just, you can't, God is awesome. Awesome. And when you walk in that, no planning on the planet Earth can achieve the things that you can achieve in Christ. So in closing, I'm going to leave you with this thought. Actually, um, I had a couple of verses to read, but um, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm just going to close it out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate that. 